Hello and welcome back to a new week of festivities. What I wanted to show you guys, first of all, what we're doing today. We are going to go run a bunch of errands and we're doing a thrifty thrift. A thrift miss. Merry thrift miss. I have a craft project that I want to film today. Let's see, I have to go to, oh, I'm picking up our Christmas cards. If you had the chance to run out and grab your advent from Ulta, if you didn't, it's no big deal. I just thought it would be kind of fun because if I had this and I knew that there was a YouTuber that was going to be doing this throughout the entire month of Christmas, I would, I would want to do it along with them. I think it would be fun. It makes it feel kind of interactive. And we have one, two, and three. I am going to open up four and five. I think that's kind of the vibe. I could switch it up, but I think it's fun to do two and then save one for like a couple days from now. So we're going to do four and five together. This morning I was like, I really want to use the clear gel. That's my favorite thing so far is the clear gel. It's really nice quality. Oh, cute. Okay. Remember how I said I wanted a lip product? Mainly a liquid lip. This, I think, is a gloss called Dreamy. That's so cute, though. It's like glittery pink. If you have it, you're able to see for yourself. But it has glitter in it. But not like chunky glitter. It's a good glitter. That's actually really cute. And you know what? Can more people please design lids that are serrated or like edged like this? Because... I feel like I can actually grip it and get it open. <laughs> okay, that's cute. I will wear that tomorrow and I'll do it with lipstick. I can't do gloss over a liquid lip. Mm-mm, mm-mm, gets chunky. Okay, let's go on to number five. Yay! This is actually really, really fun. <laughs> I love it. Ooh, a gel eyeliner. Now, the eyeliner that came in the Sephora one last year, I really li I liked it. I was like, oh my gosh, this is really good. I needed this this morning. I, I have on this green, smoky kind of green eyeshadow, and I was thinking how I wish I had a brown that I liked, a really good deep brown. I'm gonna actually put this on. I needed this this morning, I'm not kidding. It would have looked so beautiful with the uh, green, wouldn't it? Instead of this black eyeliner. I mean, I still like the black. All right, well, cute. Gel liner in Muse is the, the name of the, the color. It's called Muse. Nice. I like it. <laughs> God, I'm easy to please. <laughs> I really am. Even like my husband knows when buying Christmas gifts for me, I'm like really easy. Advent is done. Let me sip my coffee. This is coffee number two. I've been up since seven. I think I woke up at 6.50. Oh dear. So I am heading to the same thrift store that I always go to just cause it's my favorite one. And it's always like in the middle of all the errands I have to run. I'm actually looking for a big chunky sweater because the craft that I'm doing is gonna require me cutting one. And so I wanna find one that's really affordable that I'm not gonna feel guilty about cutting. I actually even thought about going to the Goodwill bins, which is where everything's just like thrown into a big pile and you just dig. You gotta be in the right mood to go to the Goodwill bins and I don't know that I am today. found what I was looking for and I cannot wait to make this crap. This is going to be a really fun way to repurpose things. I got all of the things that I needed for under 20 bucks because I had a coupon and plus I shopped the stuff that was... I tried to look at the tags that were already 50% off today. All right, the next errand is Whole Foods. I'm gonna grab some oranges so that I can make orange garland. I do need to make a wreath and so that is another crap. <laughs> the size of this thing. I'm trying to eat it at the stoplights. Vroom vroom, motherfuckers! Huh. That is tasty. Now we are headed to the um, office depot, and that is where my cars have been printed. I got a red light. It means I can have pizza. <laughs> okay cards are done. I'm going to go to the craft store and poke around because I want to see if there's Christmas cards there. So many 
compliments on my raincoat and I saw a girl wearing the most fabulous outfit. She's wearing satin red pants, a black sequined top, and then she had a little YSL crossbody and her hair was all done up, her makeup was all, makeup was all done up. Where I live, that's just not something you see as often. You don't see girls really dressed up around here. And I always say something when I do see someone putting in that effort because I appreciate it, you know what I mean? And so I was like, girl, your outfit is so good. And she's like, thank you, you know? It's just nice to hear. And I like to hear it. I heard it today a few times and mainly because people love that you can see my outfit with the jacket. I'm letting it defrost in here. When I see girls like that, I kind of secretly want to befriend them, you know? Because I just feel like if you're willing to dress like that when you leave the house, we've got a lot in common. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. I wanted one of those sweater ornaments so bad, but I thought how fun would it be to make it? So I specifically looked for sweaters that were 50% off or just like affordable. And so I found two. One is a Forever 21 sweater that had the blue tag, which is what was half off. That was a dollar and some change. So we have the first sweater on. Gosh, I really don't want to though. I kind of like it. So I am gonna try it on, but the point of that, I saw all the damage that was on it and that it would be a dollar and some change and I thought this is exactly what I'm talking about. And then the other one is by Sun and Shadow. It's a small so it won't fit me anyway. And it was $4.29. And this literally is what I was thinking. So putting the ornament in the sleeve, especially a small, like a size small is perfect because the size of the ornaments that I have would fit in here better. If it was too big, I would have to kind of make up for the extra space unless I have a bigger ornament. So I feel like this sweater is perfect. And I was really thinking of a creamy color knit and there's a specific knit I was looking for. I wanted it to look like it was hand knit. So something with a thicker stitch to it that looked more sweatery. But here's the other thing I got. I did already try this on in the store. It was $5.99. It's a size small, but it fits. Is this Baroque? Is that the, <laughs> I'm Baroque after all this shopping. Super, super cute. It's one of those fitted cardigans that I think would look so adorable tucked into a skirt even the one I have on which I did try this on and like kind of get an idea and it's it's adorable and then the last thing is this it's gold but it looks almost mustard colored but it's very gold it has a shape to it that I really like I have a couple of holiday events coming up I just needed some dress options so this is possible and this is Michael Kors this is a Michael Kors really beautiful little gold dress and then that's it for the thrift store by the way i did get a daily planner and i went with a really simple one because i want to get a louis vuitton cover and i thought this would fit the size of most of the louis vuitton ones that i saw on the real real they have these planner covers and they're pretty affordable i think they're like under 100 bucks for a louis one so i just want to get a thrifted one to cover maybe it'll work on this if it doesn't then i'll go a different route and then I went to the craft store I got some felt for a project this is exactly what I was looking for I dropped it on the ground though you know how felt is it just like picks everything up this is our Christmas cards this year and I went with photo instead of paper the last few times we got paper I felt like it kind of messed with the quality and let me show you the difference this is more of a postcard material so you hear that it's more of like a card card and this is more of a photograph I don't know I just thought maybe a photo print might be a nice way to change it up a little bit this year but I like the card itself it's like a dark green I love this really deep green color and then the gold Christmas around it a couple of little pieces of yarn to uh, make crafts with this is they're both for two different crafts this is gonna be actually for the wreath I was thinking it would be nice to wrap the wreath with some green yarn and then a second thing of cards because we're sending out a lot and I needed two so that's it that's the cards I'm gonna go try these dresses on good news look how jacked up this sweater is it's completely wrecked I have no guilt whatsoever cutting into this and making a craft with it I don't know that this is the skirt I would wear it with or if I would belt it or what but this is the little cardigan how cute it's just so good 
it's so good and it fits me so nice it has so much give like it's really stretchy so even though it's a small it still fits really well all right and here is the michael kors dress i absolutely love it i love the shape of it i love the sleeves that they come up to this little bit of a ruffly point it's so nice I love the shape. I was worried that if this blew open that it would like expose everything, but it actually doesn't because it goes pretty far up there. This is my own belt. It's a little uh, mustard colored vintage like 70s belt I've had for absolute ages. I've had this belt longer than I can admit. <laughs> we need a little bit shining up, but it matches it so well. This is definitely a really cute dress and a total score. I think I got this for $11. So adorable. And this is Michael Kors. So this is a really good brand. I have my sweaters here. And then I also have some extra ornaments. I didn't buy ornaments for this. I just have extra ones hanging about. So any that you don't care about, they're going to get covered up anyway. But I think if it had something kind of neutral to go underneath, we're going to start with this one. So that's how it's going to go around the ornament. So you just want to keep the top of it free. Now, if you can knit, Obviously, you can make this handmade very easily, but I think buying a sweater for people who don't have the time to knit or aren't as good at it as some, my sister-in-law is really good at knitting. Then once you get it kind of where you want it, I'm just gonna double back. And then now we're gonna pinch the other side and continue it on that way. If you have like a little extra on the end, just kind of tuck it into itself. Then once you get to that end, just do the same, double back. I'm just working it back towards the other one so that I can tie it together. And then once it's on and it's secure, then you're gonna do the bottom. You wanna kind of squeeze it so that the sweater is like really pulled tight around. Make sure it's pulled taut, taut like a twiga. You have a toy body. Yes. I see that from your toy pants. Yes, you are toy like a tiger. Cut across. And now you just want to sew the bottom. Okay, and now I'm going to add some of the Christmas tree clippings that I have here and a little bit of berry branch that I found in my own backyard. You can add bows to it. You can add more ribbon. You can wrap it in lace. Whatever it is that you want to do to decorate it even more. But I'm going to move on to attempting the same thing, but with this brown sweater. And there you have sweater balls. <laughs> Don't you love my sweater balls? I can't wait to get my mouth around this ball. <laughs> I like the way your balls smell. No one can resist my sweaty balls. They're cute. I like. This one got a little bit Frankenstitch because the sleeve is a little bit too big for the ball. So I almost need a bigger ornament to stuff with this particular sweater, but this one worked out really well because the sweater was this small. So my recommendation would be choosing sweaters that are definitely on the smaller side of the sleeve if your ornament is a standard ornament size. And I think they came out really cute and they would make cute little gifts as well. <laughs> Would you believe they put a man on the moon? Man on the moon. No, I'm just kidding. Would you believe that this is slept on hair unbrushed? Can we just talk about my hair journey for one second? I did so much to it. I bleached it. I went dark. I went red. I went crazy. And then I bleached it back and then I put in extensions because it was really damaged and it was like super short from all the damage. And then I put in the extensions and I wore those for like, what, almost two years while I grew my hair back out. The extensions did allow for me to still have long hair and love my hair, but I didn't, I don't feel like I really truly started taking really good care of it until just recently I took my extensions out, the tape ends, and I, I really do credit it to using oils 
on a daily basis. Like I, why did I say it weird? My tongue feels big in my mouth. Do you ever have that happen where you're like talking and your tongue just feels like it's taking up all that space in your mouth? I'm about to put lipstick on by the way, which is why I have a nude lip. At night when I'm doing my skincare and everything, I just added this as a new nighttime regimen and I, I'll be honest with you, this is what I'm probably going to do for the rest of my life. Like I intend on doing skincare every day. Why would I ever stop doing hair care? It doesn't make sense, but I've never really done it. It's not something that people think is like really a necessity. It's not really drilled in the way skincare is. Like everybody knows you gotta do skincare. If you're a woman who wears makeup, you have to wash your makeup off and then what? Your face feels dry, so you have to do skincare. But you don't really feel the effects of dry hair. It's not the same as the sensation of dry skin and your skin needing nourishment. If you've never used jojoba oil as a bikini line razor burn reliever, start now because it's amazing. And I use jojoba oil for a lot of things. I use it for that. I use it for putting on my hair when I get out of the shower. If I've like done a little bit of a hair mask in the shower and I get out, I just work jojoba oil into my hair. I've been using this stem cell scalp treatment, uh, putting the split end stuff on. So if I wake up and my hair feels, like right now there's a spot back here that got a little frizzy from sleeping and I can just go get that split end treatment and just do this and it'll start to kind of come back to, um, you know, being like healthy looking. And then I curled this yesterday and this is just leftover curl. And I just bleached my hair. I just bleached it. Well, I did the ammonia free bleach, but I just put bleach and tone on it and it looks so healthy. So this is slept on, just curled once, hair. The first time ever in my life, my hair is long and blonde and healthy at the same time. It's just unheard of. That is my spiel on hair health and taking care of your hair, but you've gotta be diligent about it. You've gotta take the vitamins. You've gotta use the oils. You've gotta use the heat protectant serums and just do it every single day if you can. I didn't wanna put any lip stuff on because I'm praying that our final advent opening for the week is a lip product. We really don't know. And then we've closed out this side already. I was right. I was right. But we have a liquid lip and it's very similar to the Sephora one that I absolutely love and still to this day love so much. And like, what a generous size, like comparatively. Oh. The feel of it's actually growing on me and I know I'm starting to think I like that more. Kind of, you know how sometimes some liquid lips are on a, they have like a powdery feel to them? It reminds me of Carolina Herrera liquid lip. It almost has that powdery feel. I don't have a liquid lip that's in this like really light color tone. So that shows up almost nude. I actually really like it. So these are the types of oranges that I got from Whole Foods. It's just a big old bag because I don't know how many I'm going to need, but they're so delicious. I actually had <laughs> some orange for breakfast just because I was cutting it and it smelled so good. But let's ch check on it. Wow, where did my voice just go? Let's check on them and give them a little flip. So here we are and it looks like it's working. And did you know I didn't know this until I started looking into this last night. These last two years, when you dry them out properly, two years. So you really could reuse these as ornaments after you make them and string them up. But look at how cute. <laughs> look at how cute. So I think this will be adorable on a wreath. But here's the outfit. I love this outfit. I feel like I look like a chocolate mint dream. <laughs> it is this brown H&M like sh mini shirt dress, but it's really cozy. Like this, honestly, I could wear this as a nightgown. It's that comfortable. And then we have this mint vintage cardigan I got antiquing up north. And I actually have brown leggings on. I bought these recently and I love the leggings. They go up really high and are really comfortable. So I actually need to order them in black. Oh so. <laughs> my God. <laughs> I am infamous for getting things wrong in songs. Infamous. There's an ongoing joke between me and my husband where the song Karma Chameleon, when he says, loving is easy when your colors are like my dream, which I know now. I thought he was saying, lama ma fizi, ma kama kalaka ma And I thought he was speaking another language. <laughs> 
So my husband and I, whenever we're talking and making jokes about mispronouncing things, we'll just go Lama Mafizi. <laughs> it's just like this ongoing joke. Lama Mafizi. What? I think there was a Garth Brooks one I was just thinking of the other day too. Blame it all on my roots. I showed up in boots and ruined your black tie affair. Ruined your black tie affair. I thought it was a tie affair and that a tie affair was one word. And I thought that a tie affair was like a type of party, not your black tie affair. I was just thinking about how 12 Days of Christmas is my least favorite Christmas song. And I was just looking up what all the gifts were that you got for a Christmas in the 12 days of Christmas. A pear, a partridge, turtle doves, French hens. I thought it was calling birds. I thought they were birds that called you. Calling birds. Bird, bird, kicking bird. But it's collie bird. What the hell is a collie bird? I didn't even know a collie bird was a thing. What is a collie bird? Alexa, what is a collie bird? The European black bird, Tordus marula, was the original collie bird, as collie meant black in English, and border collies were named after this bird. By the way, you have a new notification. The border collie was named after the collie bird. Gold rings, geese a laying, swans a swimming, maids a milking, ladies dancing, lords a leaping, pipers piping, and a drummer drumming. But I did not know that it wasn't a calling bird. <laughs> oh my god, my husband is going to die when he hears this because he loves hearing like new discoveries like when I told him the other day about the Garth Brooks one he was like what what is a tie affair I don't know you tell me <laughs> ask Garth <laughs> look at that so that has been about three and a half hours three hours also let me just say that the simmer pot is going back here with the Christmas tree pine branches the apple and the oranges in there and my god <laughs> this house smells so good. It's just like auto playing all of these Christmassy, Christmas videos. Oh, how pretty. Oh my gosh, this is magical. Look at that. Ugh. I want to be on that train drinking hot cocoa and crying about how beautiful it is. I am not the wreathiest wreath maker of all the wreathers, but I definitely can put something together I think that will look decent enough. I have a red bow I think will be really nice. I have some glittery berries. These are fake. There are real berries, but I already had these. And the berries that I got off of the branches in my backyard, I'm a little worried because they keep falling off. And with so many dogs coming, I just don't want loose berries roaming around my house. So I just love the idea of doing these. And these are just those little sticks that you can get at the craft store. Tons of branches off of the Christmas tree. So this should be plenty. All right, well, I'm gonna get to stringing this on. Now I'm tucking in most of the branches on the outside, but I'm leaving a couple to just get a little wild. All right, now I just want to add my little sticks, which this should be pretty easy since I really could just do that easy as pie. Okay, I have poked a little hole in the orange. I think I can get this through. Good morning. As you saw, I had a little cup of cheer. I'm already on cup number two. I've been up here experimenting with some things with makeup. Just wanted to uh, perfect it before I do a reel because in my head I knew this would work. I've done it before. I've done it a million times. I think I even just like would experiment with stuff like this when I worked at the matte counter. I would just sit there and play because you have all this makeup and you just you kind of just mix things together and see what happens. And MAC has the best little glitters, as we know, in the little pigment jars. And I've had these forever, and I have a bunch actually. I have so many of these. This is old school. I don't even know if they still put things in these, these kinds of jars, but this is like a purple glitter. This is like a really cool gold with green. Oh, that one's one of my favorites. You know what? This would look so pretty with that gold. Oh. 
I just got so excited. That gold dress, the Michael Kors, how pretty would this look all over the lid for a night out? That's what I'm doing. So good to know. And then this is just the old school, good old fashioned white glitter with the gold. Actually, I don't think this is even gold reflex. Oh, <laughs> It's called Reflex Gold. So what I'm doing is Dior came out with a lipstick that went viral and it's a lipstick that you put on and then when you do that, it pops glitter. Okay, okay baby. Your lips together, this new Dior lipstick becomes glittery. Let's test it together. Not Dior, Dior, you guys. Red. It's red. Okay, Dior. Okay, Dior. It's been a couple of minutes. Let's see. <gasps> It like has a pop of glitter to it and it's sold out. And I, of course, being the Dior lover that I am, would have probably cut off one of my toes to be able to have that lipstick. <laughs> That's a little extreme, but I just want you to know how bad I wanted to get my hands on it. It was already completely overtaken by the internet before I can even blink my eye. So. I thought, for all of us out there who didn't get it, how can we make it ourselves? And this is what I came up with. And it is such a beautiful lip color. I mixed some red lipstick with some glitter on a palette, like so. And I really mixed it together. So when you do that, you feel like you're losing the glitter. You feel like it's kind of making it disappear into the lipstick. Will you even see it? You will, you will still see it. So just mix it, but you have to use a generous amount of glitter to get it to look like this. Once you do, and you have it mixed to the uh, amount that you want it, and you apply it, when you do that and rub your lips together, that's when you'll really see the glitter pop. It's really simple. I used a NYX lipstick that I got for like a few bucks. This is spicy and it's really affordable. And then I used the white glitter, but you can use any glitter. I think NYX even does carry just a simple white glitter. I am rambling. I need to uh, film real so that people can see this lipstick. So I'm gonna do that right now. And then later we're gonna go downstairs and we're gonna do a couple of things actually. I have a treat I wanna make and then I also have a really easy DIY Christmas decoration that my mom sent me. So stay tuned for that, I'll be right back. Okay, I just got done filming that and I just wanted to say that it turned out so much better the second time because I used more glitter. So I would say if you're using like a good little shaving of your lipstick and then you wanna add the glitter in to do about a half of a teaspoon of glitter and I think that would be the perfect amount. And then I even packed the glitter over top so that it just really looked, you know, glittery. Today's holiday setting is what looks like a New York apartment with a lovely snowfall in a beautiful, beautifully decorated home. Look at the cat snoozing. And I like how the coffee over here has steam. The top of my tree lights went out and I need to fix that. So I have to dig to see if I have any extra Christmas lights anywhere. Christmas tree is back in business, baby. I went into a fit of rage for one second, one split second and yanked this off the tree out of frustration. Because it was twisted inside of the, of the string and it drove me absolutely bat shit, but I got it. <laughs> and then I, now I ruined the string on it. It's actually okay, I can restring it. Yeah, it was just a fit of rage. I also need to hang my orange ornaments, which I wanna do today. So I'm gonna do some orange slice hanging and then we're gonna do our, our task, our Christmas task, which is involving this frame. So my mom emailed me the concept and I'm gonna do my own creative twist on it, which is maybe add some pearls to the string but she suggested, and it's a great idea, that I use these ornaments that I've had since I was a kid, and I'm pretty sure that this was my great-grandmother's. So we've had these ornaments for a really long time, and you can tell by the state of this box. <laughs> it is so beat to hell. We tape together. Look, it's all of our Alice in Wonderland. It is such a nostalgic ornament kit, and I'm so glad that she passed it on to me. So special. My favorite one is the Cheshire Cat. He's a little creepy because he's very old. And the Walrus is another favorite. But obviously, we can't forget the very iconic Alice. 
So I'm going to go ahead and pre-string all the ornaments and I'm gonna lay them out across the table, but I'm just gonna put a couple of pearls on the bottom of mine because I think that looks really nice. And then also now I can cut that string and it'll be less visible. All right, so as you can see, I very carefully placed them around and barely moving them. They really knock around a lot. So I'm glad that they're strategically placed separate from each other. This would be such a cute gift for somebody who is having a baby turned out so good. I love it. Like I absolutely love it. And I really do think I want it to just be up year round. Wow. I don't know why it took my eyes a second to find you. I was like, <laughs> anyway, I was, I was originally getting dressed to take some of my clothes to the place I can sign them in the store because I have a replenishment of things that I've added to a pile that I'd like to get out of my house. <clears throat> I'm trying to unpile myself, you guys. And she was like, oh no, we're not gonna be there today. We'll be there tomorrow. So I'm so glad I didn't go, but I got ready and I put on my new shirt and I'm all excited about it now that I'm like, well, what now? That was really what I was gonna do to get out of the house, run an errand. Uh, this happens a lot with me, especially when like dog hotel really ramps up. I'm just home with dogs so much that I need to get out of the house and talk to a person. I have some things coming up that's like social, so that'll be really good for me. I mean, I'm homebody nine out of 10, but there is like a one moment, the 10, <laughs> that I want to be around people and I just wanna talk and I wanna just chat with like adults. The point is, is that since I'm not going to go do that, I still have to go, I have to go get my groceries. I have a grocery pickup order because you guys know I love to pick up my groceries. And uh, I already did all the shopping this morning. It's my favorite thing. Getting a coffee, sitting down, shopping for what we need. My Goodwill, my go-to Goodwill is the one that usually has the best Christmas decor. And I just thought maybe just to get out of the house, I'll have my coffee. It's, it'll be quick, but it'll just be something just to get me out and then I'll go get my groceries. This is the new gloss. Oh, I like it. It's kind of pearly. I don't have anything like it. Oh, I like. Hair's done, makeup is done. I feel like I'm forgetting something. My dogs now are trained that when I do certain things at the end of my makeup routine, that they know that it means it's time to rally. If I put the setting spray on, they'll jump down off of that window seat they're in right now and think that it's time to go downstairs. At least my girl dog does. <laughs> she just knows that this is the sound that I'm like done with my makeup and that we can go downstairs now. Anyway, let's go downstairs and make some chocolate oranges. I'm really excited to try these actually. I have a little twist I'm doing on them. Now to make these chocolate oranges, I'm just going to be cutting the oranges into little slices, but the twist, I'm going to be adding a little bit of candy cane crumble to the chocolate, just to give it something extra. I think it'll be nice. All right, we're just gonna start cutting the oranges in half. I feel like the best way to get the entire orange is just to take the ends and kind of start squeezing them till you get to the center. And that's been the quickest way for me to get the full peel off. Now, if you saw my simmer pot video, you will know why I am saving these rinds. I want them to be in a little bit more of an edible bite. All right, now we're gonna add the chocolate to the pan. Putting it inside. Now I'm gonna just take an orange slice, dip it, and sprinkle it. Kind of like a lovely little elf factory of goodness. <laughs> All right, and then you can either stick these in the freezer for like 10 minutes if you wanna eat them sooner or pop them in the fridge and go run an errand or two, come back and the chocolate will be set. I'm gonna give it a try without ruining my gloss. 
Yum. That is such a quick, easy snack if you just wanted chocolate dipped oranges. I don't think I've properly shown you guys what I'm wearing today and it's one of my favorite outfits. The jean skirt I got ages ago from Amazon, I think, and I cut the bottom off. Then the amazing shirt I just recently thrifted. I threw it in a wash, it didn't even shrink, so it still fits really well because I think I dried it too much, which was risky. Fits like a glove. I think it is officially one of my favorite finds thrifting in a long time other than that Louis Vuitton dress shirt that I got recently. Then we just have on some brown leggings and my Prada suede boots with a Marc Jacobs crossbody. Everything except for the skirt was thrifted. Okay, so we are at the Goodwill. I'm just gonna pop in and see if there's any Christmas decor. I'm specifically looking for things that are black and boho vibes and maybe a new project. It's so nice. Do you love it? Yeah, it's cool. <gasps> oh my gosh. It's perfect. Oh my God, it fits that spot perfectly. Is it too high? No. Oh, it's so cute. It's basically me. Mm -hmm. It's basically a painting of your wife. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is. Aww, she's cute. You're doing the lights now, I'm assuming. Yeah. These things, are these getting hardwired? Nope, they just plug in. You're just screwing them in. Yeah, I'm gonna screw them in. I don't trust the sticky on there. Yeah. So it's gonna go like that. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I kinda. That's really cool. I mean, obviously, like, it'll look neat just like that, but it's neat that we can, like, move it. It's adorable. Just like my little babies. I am back from getting groceries and <laughs> went a little crazy, but uh, I just wanted to make sure there's plenty of snacks for the week coming up, get us through the weekend. And I got stuff to make a roast. It's gonna be one of those like eight hour roast with potatoes and carrots and just like make the whole house smell delicious salivating thinking about it but tonight's healthy 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 like really light it's just like a chickpea bowls we've been really enjoying the vegetarian options on hellofresh and we do hellofresh like four days out of the week and it's all like they're light and fit and healthy so that way we're kind of forced to eat healthy um, from time to time you know we can like indulge in something a little more hearty which i think the uh, roast with potatoes is a very hearty, delicious meal. So that'll be so good. Today's festive scenery is a coffee shop, a fireplace that I am envious of, some lattes that are still steaming, and it looks like a very scenic, woodsy town outside. I blew a fuse, you guys. I blew a Christmas freaking fuse. I am so frustrated. Plug her in. <laughs> oh, don't anybody move. Remember when I told you yesterday that I had about an adult tantrum, what could be the equivalent of an adult tantrum? Taking the, <laughs> taking the string that had blown a fuse or whatever off the top of the tree but the ornaments and all of the decorations are still on the tree so unraveling that from the branches and the pine and the ornaments without making a huge mess that was like infuriating and i was <laughs> hanging out in the living room. We were doing our Christmas cards last night. And as we're sitting there with Love Island Australia on in the background, the light goes and the top part of the tree fricking blew another fuse. I'm blowing a Christmas fuse. A fuse is out. Ha! 
Isn't that pretty? <laughs> so good. So that might be what I'm gonna name this video because it's so funny to me that my light keeps going out on my Christmas tree. So I think what's happening, and because I'm married to an electrician, he could confirm that the get the wires get too hot. When they do that, they trip the fuse, so that way they don't melt and get like dangerously hot. My tree. So what's the matter with you? I thought that we only had LEDs. I didn't realize we had traditional lights as well. So the ones that are on there right now are LEDs, which mean they don't get hot. The other ones were the old school ones that do get hot. So I'm actually kind of glad they're not on the tree anymore because I was keeping the lights on around the clock and now I'm starting to get a little worried and unplugging them at night, but... <sighs> I tripped a fuse. So I just kind of worked the lights that I do have up the tree a little bit. Been up for a couple of hours and I need to get our dinner going. <laughs> You've heard that right. Let me find my phone so I have my recipe. So the recipe says that this takes eight hours. So that's for a three pound chocolate. Okay, mine is 2.4, so that's pretty close. So this will probably take about seven hours in the slow cooker. So you're gonna pan sear it on both sides first, which locks in all the juices. And then when you put it in the slow cooker and it slowly cooks inside of the juices, it stays nice and moist. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is salt and pepper the entire thing. Rosemary. I'm just gonna sear both sides of the roast. While that's going, we're gonna get the veggies ready. Okay, now this might be a weird step for you, but this is just something I'm doing to make sure that nothing gets stuck to the bottom of the slow cooker. You can do this with any kind of like cooking oil, but I love ghee. Ghee is one of my favorite oils and uh, just cooking ingredients in general. I love searing things with ghee and it can go to really high heat as well. It looks so good already. I'm gonna do about two tablespoons of Worcestershire one tablespoon of soy sauce. We're doing one more Christmas craft and then I'm gonna close out the week. I'd like to, if I can, get this up Sunday evening, but I would have three videos to edit before then. <laughs> so we'll see about that. Oh, I just love piling content onto myself. an assortment of felt in various colors. I'm gonna go with red and green so it's nice and festive. Now with a marker, you're gonna to want to make your fish shape or whatever shape you're doing. And then cut it out. Get your needle and thread ready. I think we're gonna go with white for this one for a contrasting stitch. I'm gonna start right here. Now that we've got it mostly stitched up, I've got just some crinkly stuff here. This is just scrap, whatnot. <laughs> you could just take this off of any package that makes a sound. And then I also have some cotton from a pillow that was actually destroyed by a dog, like it got chewed apart. Kept the pillow because look at how big it is. It's huge and I thought I could reuse all of the stuffing in this pillow so it's really just become my cotton source. So we're just gonna stuff this little opening here. I could have left it a little bit bigger so I can get inside, <laughs> but that's okay. Get something in there that makes some sound. And then stuff it with cotton. I have some googly eyes, so I want my fish to have an eyeball. You can also use a button if you wanted to make a button eye for your fish. For me, the eyeball was an afterthought, so I think if I was, was to plan it out, I would do that first and place it where I want on the felt and then do the eyeball so that it's easier to sew it on. But there is your fish cat toy. Makes crinkle sounds. 
and there we have them little fish aren't they so cute i am going to end this video now and insert any sort of pot roast video into the end of it if you guys want to see what that turned out like but i'm sure you can use your imagination i actually want to get all of this edited i'm going to make a couple more fish and get all of this edited for sunday's upload i hope you guys enjoyed all of the crafts and cooking we did or baking and cooking we did this week it was a really fun one and i had a good time thrifting with you so stay tuned for next week with more fun festive content and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe if you're not and i'll see you guys on vlogmas week three bye